Hello everybody, welcome to another video, and if you are brand new, welcome to iRacing, you'll love it. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about how you get out of rookie class. Now, you may well have seen the likes of Lando Norris, Max Verstappen, other Formula 1 drivers, other real race drivers on the iRacing service, and you really fancy putting yourself up against those guys. Well, it's possible, however, you need to get out of rookie class first. Now, you may think that is easier said than done. However, if you follow these simple steps and basic principles, then you will be out of rookie class in no time. And you can carry these forward to get out of D class, C class, B class, uh, to get where you need to be if you follow these simple steps. Now, there are two things to think about to get out of rookie class. The first thing is think safety. Um, that's paramount. Don't think about finishing position think safety so no off tracks no contact with any of the cars no losing control and the second thing is be in control and when i say be in control i mean be in control of your race you're the one who should be dictating what happens in your race and where you place your car now if we're going to be trying to get out of rookie class i would highly recommend not qualifying put your car right at the back because the chances are you are going to get hit from behind. You can't do a thing about that. If you're slowing down because there's a car in front of you or there's a turn and somebody behind you doesn't, then there's not a lot you can do about that. But if you're the guy at the back, you can control where you put your car. Also, it's vitally important to get practice on track. Don't just jump straight on track because iRacing is tough. Even these Mazdas, they are tough to drive. And before you know it, you will be off track. So there's another method we can use. Instead of not qualifying and starting at the back of the grid, we can start from pit road, which I think we'll do on this occasion to show you how it's done. Now, we will lose a few seconds at the beginning. However, that's normally a good thing because it lets all the carnage and all the mess sort itself out before you get there because we're not worried about finishing position. Now, I did a similar video to this last year. However, I did that on my main account, and the race that I did was a top split Mazda race. I did explain the mentality and the thought process required to get you out of rookies. However, it wasn't a rookie race. So, I've created a second account, and this is going to be the first race on that account. So, it's going to be a genuine rookie race. So, we're going to talk about this one as we drive around Summit Point Jefferson Circuit. Probably one of the most chaotic tracks on the whole of iRacing with it being so short. So, this is an ideal opportunity to show you how to avoid the carnage. So, the qualifying times are coming in now. We're over five minutes into qualifying. I would imagine all of those that are going to qualify will qualify now. I fully expect that you would have done some practice before the race to get to know the circuit. and You will have a rough idea where your lap times are. Now, I was out earlier on. I did some practice and my lap times are mid 55, late 55, something like that. So you would then have a look at the guys on the list and see who's qualifying or who's round about the same pace that you are. Now, you don't want to be in track anywhere near those guys because before you know it it turns into a race and you're banging doors and you're getting incident points left right and center which defeats the purpose of this tutorial so what we're going to do we're going to start from the pits let those guys get up the road do whatever they want to do cause whatever carnage they want to cause by the time we get there hopefully they've all moved off and we can just continue now, what I would advise you do is do your three qualifying laps. So your out lap and your two fast laps. However, start from the pits. Um, don't put yourself on the grid. Uh, no matter what time you've set in qualifying, if you start from the pits, you're going to be a good 15, 20 seconds behind the rest of the pack. And remember, this is about safety rating, not finishing position. Also, at the end of the race, when you pass the checkered flag, Come all the way around again and come into the pits because uh, safety rating is determined uh, by how many incidents you have per corner. 
So um, safety rating is in play until the last car crosses the line. So that may not be you. Uh, everybody else might have crashed out. Uh, so do a full lap and go back into the pits. So qualifying's over. Let's get on track. So there we go. We missed the start. We let the countdown go down. Everybody's gone. And then we're going now. So everybody has gone and left us. We don't want a penalty. So we're just driving up the road now. So if we look at our relative, you'll see 15 seconds we have lost on the guys in front, which is fine. We're just gonna slowly drive round. We will catch them up, I've no doubt about that. We'll catch somebody up. But if you're happy with the circuit, there's nothing wrong with, with getting your foot down and putting some laps in. If you're happy that you're not gonna run off, off the track. So what's important as well, your relative box. Down in the bottom right corner there, that's F3 by default. So keep an eye on your relative box. You can see there's two people in the pits there already. So we're going to be passing this. That's two positions that we've gained on the first lap by starting in the pits. So we're catching those guys up now, still looking at the relative. So we're nine seconds, we can actually see them on track there now. And we're only gonna go for an overtake if we think we can get it done without an immediate challenge back from those guys in front. So we are catching them quite quickly. There's been an incident by the look of it because the relative's going down quite quickly. So 4.4 seconds now. So, those two guys are still in the pits, they're a lap down now. And a yellow flag there, so we just need to be mindful of that and keep a lookout ahead. See what's coming up, we can see there's four cars in front of us now. So, they're nicely spread out, they're unbunched. Now, will we be able to get past this guy? Yeah, he's obviously... Moving across, letting us by, so he doesn't want to play. These are crashing ahead, so we're just going to slow down. He's off to the right, no problem. We're going to watch this guy, yep. Yeah, he's staying there, so you've just got to be aware and be prepared to break and come to a complete stop if needs be. This guy's going really slow for some reason. We'll try and get this guy done if we can on the exit. But we'll see how it goes with this guy. If he's going to uh, push us into this turn, then we'll let him... No, he's not. He's backed off. That's fine. So he, he doesn't want a part of it. It was clear that he wasn't going to battle. If he wasn't going to break, then I wasn't going to try and outbreak him into turn one, because then that defeats the purpose, like I said, of what we're trying to do here today. So then we've got Luca, who is six seconds up the road, we've got no pressure from behind. Lucas six seconds away, so we don't need to worry about him for now. And that's us up to P5. And we haven't really had to work for that. All we've done is be safe and stay out of trouble. So as you can see, I'm not really pushing too hard in this race. There's somebody else in the pits now number one car or the number six car who was in p1 so that's another position that we've gained for free so we're catching up with lucas slowly he's four and a half seconds away so we might not need to worry about him as the race goes on, depending on how he goes. If he stays nice and consistent, 
we should be fine. But there's no pressure from behind. But he's slowing that last sector there. It's three seconds now, so if we do catch him up, we need to be mindful of that. He might break early into that final turn, because it is a tricky turn, that one. The final turn here at uh, Jefferson. You can see smoke ahead and a stopped car, so we're just going to be careful that he doesn't come on track. He didn't. He was a back marker. Nice driving Sergio. He waited there. But that's made us close the gap up to Luca. So this is for a podium. So, But you need to remember that that's not what it's about. It doesn't matter whether we're third, fourth, sixth, tenth. It really doesn't matter when you're in the uh, rookie class. We just need to be thinking about getting out of that rookie class. And getting our D license, which will then open up some other doors. So again... We're going to have to be careful of this guy. So I'm probably not going to do anything here. I'll just wait. I don't want to be battling with this fella. He's a bit erratic, shall we say. He's all over the place. So we'll just sit behind him. There, he's nearly on the grass there. So again, just keeping a close eye on this guy. He doesn't want to lose this position. In Luca's mind, this is a podium. He wants this podium bad. Luca can have this podium and I'm quite sure that Luca will probably th drive himself off the circuit because we're putting a little bit of pressure on we're halfway through the race now as I mentioned earlier on Luca's quite slow into this section so he did break he did break quite hard there At this point, it would be so easy to go for a move. But he does break quite early, so I'm quite happy that I could, or if I wanted to, get him on the brakes. However, I'm not going to do that. We'll just try and put him under a little bit of pressure. But now I'm quite happy now that we're better than him into this final turn. So I don't think he'll be able to outbreak us going into here. We've got the inside line, and that's Luca gone. You've just got to wait for your opportunity to go for it. And he's quite um, early on the brakes into turn one as well, so. I don't think we'll be able to get it stopped and turned like we can. So we shouldn't have any problems from that guy now. However, we do have a back marker. If this guy holds us up, then we may need to worry about Luca once more. And if it looks like Luca... So this guy's not going to give it up. So we'll just let him drive himself off the circuit. And we'll take that position. So that is up to a podium, and we've not had to do anything apart from that one overtake on Luca, which was uh, relatively straightforward. What you've got to be careful of is trying to overtake somebody on the outside, because you can't control when they break or how wide they go. Are they going to run into you? Are they going to use you as a buffer to stop them going off track? That's what you don't want. So as you can see, we haven't really had to try too hard in this one to gain those positions. We've only had to make one real overtake. The rest have been given to us on a plate. So people worry a lot about trying to fight for positions 
But if you just be smart and just be patient, then they'll fall on, on your lap without you even have to try to get them. So as I mentioned earlier on, the same principles can be used in any license class. It doesn't matter that it's rookie. Uh, although rookie, there's a guy off ahead there. That's a, a back marker. But he's staying to the inside, so we're fine. So yeah, it's um, it's it's more difficult to get out of rookie because there are more there are newer drivers in rookie class. Uh, people in D license, C license, they've got a few races under their belt, so they're a little bit more experienced. However, you can use the same principles what we are using here to get out of any license class you wish. Same thought process in each one. And although it's the rookie series, these Mazdas aren't rookie cars when you uh, when you start battling. Some of the best racing I've ever had is in the Global Mazda. Now we've got a back marker right ahead of us now. So we'll just take our time, get by this guy if we can, up the inside. And then we've got P2 and P1 dead ahead. But they're going to battle hard for that position, as this back marker is, for some reason. So we'll just nice and tight round here, like we did with the other guy. Now, my instinct now is telling me to battle for these two positions to get the race win, because that's what it's all about. But we're not going to do that. And if the opportunity presents itself, then why not? However, we're not going to try too hard to overtake these guys. But with a little pressure, then people can crumble and drive off track, which we'll try and do safely. These two guys are close to each other. Dave may have a go at Adrian and take each other out, which would then give us the win, as long as we can avoid that, of course. So I'm just watching here that these guys don't lose control whilst going around these turns. But they seem to be driving quite safely. We'll just sit back and watch this as it goes into the last lap, I think. I'm not going to make any moves on these guys. It's not really worth it. Unless we get a real good run. What I'll do is I'll just put myself here just to make him think that I'm going to go for it, but I'm not. Just makes him think about something else. For a little while. So I'm going to watch for an early break by Dave. And he did. So I could have had that there, but I don't know Dave. I don't know whether he would have turned in on me there, not raced against him before. Again, I'm not going to go for a move here. There we go, P3. Without even really 
having to try. So what, what we'll do now, we'll t nice slow drive round and we'll fetch it back to the pits because safety rating is still in play until the last car has crossed the line and that's definitely not us, so we finish P3. So that guy's off the track there. So we'll just take it nice and easy. So David, uh, Dave and Adrian, the guys in P1 and P2, uh, they're both rookies with an I rating of 1.3k. I'm looking at that on just to the right of my screen there. So they're in the same, exactly the same position as me. So this could be their first race on the service as well. So they've got the, the same rookie safety rating as me and the same I rating. So there we go. So that's what we need to do to get out of rookie class. So there we go. I hope that was helpful for you. Um, as I mentioned, it's the same principles for each license class. So be in control of the race. As you see, we were in complete control then. We were dictating when we went for moves, when we held back. We didn't have any pressure from any guys behind us at any point in the race. So. That's where you are going to get your instant points from, is from the rear. People running into the back of you in rookies. So my advice is, start from the pits, sit behind people, take opportunities if they present themselves, but don't go trying to outbreak anybody into turns uh, unless you are well alongside and you've got the inside line. Um, that's my advice. So... Hopefully this helps you out. Good luck in your iRacing career. Thanks for watching. See you later. Cheers.